Make a date with Reverend Dr. Ebenezer Markwe at 6 a.m. from Monday to Saturday on Graphic Online via Facebook and YouTube as he expounds on matters of faith. Graphic Online, truth and accuracy every day. This is Reverend Dr. Ebenezer Marque of Living Streams International. Uh, we meet behind the trade fair behind Zenith College, bringing you matters of faith with Graphic Online. And I'd like to caption today, bitter libations. Now, did you read the, in 1 Samuel chapter, if you remember, 1 Samuel chapter 1, verse 10 onwards. Uh, if you read that story very carefully, first, especially 1 Samuel chapter 1, it's, it's very interesting. And not just interesting, but intriguing for me. Now, uh, Elkanah had two wives, Anna and Penina. Man, that was a very great move. <laughs> you get it? And they were living in the, in, the, in the same compound and living in the same, I mean, environment. And boy, that was recipe for disaster and recipe for chaos. And the Bible said, I mean, Penina had children and then Anna didn't have children. And any time they go to the temple, watch this, the temple, that was when, I mean, Penina would go into, uh, uh, we call it uh, uh, innuendos, or we call it kasenchi. And then, you know, Penina would call one of her child, and if the child is called uh, 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 Ebenezer, say, hey, Ebenezer, come and take this for me. How blessed is this to have children and all those things. And what Penina did, she constantly rubbed it in to Anna concerning the fact that she didn't have children. And she caused every opportunity at the temple, in the house of God. And that was what uh, Penina was doing. Of course, this would raise a pain in the, in the heart of Anna. And the Bible said, you know, she took to fasting. And that was a very good thing. She took to fasting. She wouldn't eat. Her countenance was sad. That is okay. It is permitted. But the reason for her countenance being sad was because, number one, she was barren. Number two, it was being rubbed in, you know, in a, and she was being teased, and she was being made an object of public ridicule by virtue of the fact that she didn't have. Now, for me, you know, these are natural things that happen, and sometimes they do. But the Bible said she got up, you know, she was fasting. She said, I don't just need to fast. She entered the, house, the tabernacle. She entered the tent and said, I am going to pray. And... The Bible said the way she was praying, the way Eli watched her, when Eli watched her, the way she was praying and in anguish of soul, and I mean, she was praying and pouring. I mean, like Eli said, wow, I haven't seen this type of prayer before. So Eli approached her and the Bible said he thought that she was drunk because of the way her movement and the way she was praying. Of course, you can't say somebody's drunk if the person is walking straight, not doing anything unusual. So Anna was definitely doing something unusual. And the way she was doing it, by the prayer she was moving, and you get it, she was, she was like a drunkard. And of course, drunks have their own motion. You get it. I mean, hey, stand still. The time you were in the bottle, you were not shaking. But now that you are in my belly, yeah, I mean, you are, you are shaking and all that. And then Eli approached her and said, how long are you going to continue in this, your drunken state? Won't you put away the wine from you? Won't you stop being drunk and all those things? Then Anna made a classic statement. He said, no, 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 no. I'm not a base girl. Whatever you see me doing, I am pouring out the bitterness of my soul. Hear what she was saying. I was pouring out the bitterness of my soul. Now, hmm. So all the prayer, all the things that, listen, she was pouring out the bitterness. You know what Anna was doing? She was clearing her womb of all the bitterness. And I can tell you this for sure. I mean, um, what she was saying, in the womb of my spirit, in the womb of the spirit, where God plants his seed, where God places good things in, that whole place is filled with acid. That whole place is filled with, uh, with bile. That whole place is filled with bitterness. That whole place, it's, 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 it, it will kill anything. And so one of the reasons why Anna was not getting pregnant was bitterness. 
bitterness. And the bitterness in her was stifling any good thing. Any seed that God would drop would be, would be uh, uh, pulverized or would be, would, be, would be vaporized by the acid that is in her spirit. And the Bible says, so when she, went there, she said, you know, one thing, I'm going to get rid of this once and for all. I'm not going to tolerate this bitterness. And so when Eli asked her, what are you doing? He said, I'm pouring out the bitterness of my soul. Here's the principle. There are good things that sometimes God will want to do for you. But you know what's killing it? You know why the thing has been long in manifestation? Bitterness. And, and we, we are not bitter about tomorrow. But we are bitter about yesterday and today. We get bitter about the events. We get bitter about our circumstances. We get bitter with, with relationships. We get, it is the bitterness. And the result of that bitterness was what was preventing a breakthrough. But the day Anna went into the temple and she poured out the bitterness, her womb was free to receive seed that was going to be spoken over her life by the man of God. So, Anna's bitterness was a preventive thing that would kill all the good things. And she needed to clear it out. And the day she cleared it all out, when she said, I am pouring out the bitterness of my soul. Now remember, now she was saying bitterness of my soul. So I have a memory stack. I have a memory portfolio. I have a memory uh, locker full of all the bad past, uh, full of all the bitter past. And she said, when I remember it, there's an acrimonious this thing that rises in me. There's a bile that rises up in me. There's anger. There's all these other things. And all those things we're doing, all those thoughts, those memories we're doing, were stifling what God wanted to do in her tomorrow until she poured it out. So I can say to you that you don't have to keep that bitterness Pour it out as a libation. Let it go. And let God take control of it. Because there's something he would want to do with you. But if your womb, the womb of your spirit, is full of bitterness of yesterday and events of today, then nothing good will come. So the Bible says, when Anna poured out, when she left the temple that day, you get it, her countenance was no longer sad. That means she had poured everything out. There's no more room for bitterness. No wonder. Nine months exactly. Odim? Nine months exactly. She had a miracle. Let there be bitter libations. It will cleanse your soul. It will clean out your spirit. For what God wants to do. See you later.